everyone! In this video today I'm going to be talking about the link between gluten sensitivity and schizophrenia. Now you'll probably wonder, are you one of those anti-gluten activists? No, I am an activist raising awareness of the link between food sensitivities and psychiatric conditions. But in relation to schizophrenia it seems that gluten sensitivity is the most researched sensitivity in relation to that condition. So I thought I'd make a video about that. My current sort of autistic special interest is revolving around food sensitivities and psychiatric conditions and I've actually been researching this on and off for years but I've been doing a lot more research lately so I thought I'd make a video about its relation to schizophrenia. I have a family history of schizophrenia, I think it was three people but thankfully I do not have it myself but I am very fascinated by this whole food sensitivity affecting the brain thing so I'm going to talk about it. Also the references I'm going to put up on the screen because I cannot pronounce the names of some people in the references and I don't want to look like an absolute fool so I'm just going to type the references up either down here or up here or just wherever I can fit it. <laughs> so over half a century ago the term bread madness was used to describe a subset of patients with schizophrenia who actually recovered with a gluten-free diet. Now the word madness is not the best word, it contributes to mental health stigma but back then, it was half a century ago, so they probably had more stigma back then, so that's probably why they just called it that. In the 1960s, Dr Curtis Doan noticed that a lot of patients with schizophrenia also had celiac disease, and as well as this, he noticed that during World War II, the lack of access to wheat products, there were less hospitalizations for schizophrenia. So this link between gluten sensitivity and schizophrenia has actually been known for a really long time. A case study from 2014 describes a patient who started developing <laughs> hallucinations at the age of four or five and later in life, I think it was during their adult years, they cut out gluten from their diet and their psychotic and gastrointestinal symptoms just disappeared, they went away and any time the individual consumed gluten they would have a return of psychosis a few hours after consumption. It's a little bit like with me, again I'm not schizophrenic but I do have food sensitivities affecting the brain, it's a bit like me with food diet, if I consume food diets a few hours after consumption I'll have a rage attack but for this individual it was gluten and psychosis. But ever since they have been completely gluten free without accidental exposure to gluten they have been completely free from neurological and gastrointestinal symptoms so that's really good for them. And there's another case study a little bit like this from 2015. The 2015 case study describes an adolescent girl who had a disappearance of psychotic symptoms when on a gluten-free diet. Now this girl didn't have celiac disease and they didn't have a wheat allergy so it's thought that she had non-celiac gluten sensitivity. There are many more case reports like this but I'm not going to go into all of them now because there's too many and it would make more sense just to do your own research on it. I will leave some articles in the description down below but I don't want to blab on too much about all the case studies because it's really the same sort of story, a person cut out gluten and had a remission of symptoms but I will be including uh, some articles down below in case you are interested in looking into more of those case studies. A literature review from 2009 stated that it's been noticed that schizophrenic patients consume more carbohydrates before a psychotic episode, so that could potentially be the trigger for their psychotic episode. It also discusses how there have been multiple small-scale studies which have shown that a gluten-free diet can be helpful for some people in reducing their symptoms of schizophrenia. The study titled Gluten Psychosis, Confirmation of a New Clinical Entity says that there's sort of a hypothesis that leaky gut syndrome could be involved so there's intestinal permeability, the peptides from gluten come out of the gut, go into the bloodstream, then cross the blood-brain barrier and interfere with neurotransmission. That's a theory as to how a gluten sensitivity may trigger psychotic symptoms. But interestingly, their case study, their patient had signs of gut inflammation and that gut inflammation went away with the elimination of gluten just like their psychotic symptoms went away with the elimination of gluten and that's really fascinating as well. The gut is sometimes referred to as like the second brain because anything that happens in the gut has the potential to affect the brain. The stomach has its own nervous system, the enteric nervous system, and that connects to the brain via the vagus nerve. You'll probably notice I'm wearing a different shirt. I'm continuing filming this video on a different day, but I wanted to say that it's mostly non-celiac gluten sensitivity that has been associated with schizophrenia and psychotic symptoms. However, Celiac disease can also have neurological manifestations and can present in that way as well. Now it's thought that around 83% of people with celiac disease are actually undiagnosed and this is likely going to be 
for people with neurological manifestations because they get diagnosed with a neurological or psychiatric condition and they don't suspect that celiac may be playing a role. Interestingly, there is an infection called Toxoplasma gondii that is linked with schizophrenia. It has been linked with schizophrenia quite a lot. And in an animal study, it has been shown that Toxoplasma gondii infection can lead to antibodies against gluten. So that may also be why a lot of schizophrenic people have gluten sensitivity. So it could be multiple factors at the same time that's influencing a person's condition. It's really important to note from this that mental illness does not just come from the mind. There is a really good video from, I think it's SciShow Psych, that talks about how schizophrenia may actually be an autoimmune disease. And with some of the stuff I'm sharing, it's possible that that autoimmune process may be triggered by gluten sensitivity in some individuals. Immunoglobulin G mediated food sensitivities are more delayed reactions, whereas typical allergies that cause things like hive and anaphylaxis are immediate, but the ones that trigger psychiatric symptoms are usually more delayed, so that means that. The reaction may not occur until hours after consumption. A paper from 2020 also highlighted this, saying that individuals with schizophrenia had higher levels of anti-gliadin antibodies than people who didn't have schizophrenia. It says that in the studies conducted so far, it shows that around 30% of people with schizophrenia have these antibodies. The paper also states that people with high levels of anti-gliadin antibodies are four to seven times more likely to develop schizophrenia as well as immunoglobulin G antibodies playing a role in these food sensitivities, it has also been found that individuals with chronic schizophrenia can have high levels of immunoglobulin A antibodies against gluten. The study also touches upon how untreated celiac disease in a pregnant mother can lead to an increased risk of psychosis in the offspring. There is a really amazing article written by someone called Eric Messamore, PhD, and their article contains case studies, different ones than the ones I've said, case studies about people recovering from schizophrenia on a gluten-free diet and also even more studies. So I will also link that very interesting article down below in the description. That is one of my favourite ones on the topic that I learned a lot from. I do think it is really important to clarify that not everyone with schizophrenia or a psychotic disorder will get better on a gluten-free diet. It depends on the individual. Everyone is different and different things work for different people. And I do wonder, though, because gluten is the most researched sensitivity in relation to schizophrenia, but I do wonder if in some cases other food sensitivities, like a sensitivity to dairy, could potentially play a role as well. But that hasn't really been researched, unfortunately. But I do think it should be because other food sensitivities can affect the brain as well. There have been studies showing that certain food sensitivities can impact people with depression and that people with bipolar disorder also have antibodies against certain food antigens, it's really, really important that this area is researched a lot more.